yes, yes. Thanks. We're just hanging out and waiting for a few minutes. Anybody want to tell me who is kind of relatively new to filmmaking or new to the Seattle area? Everyone is. Okay, good. <laughs> Depends on what you consider new. You know, that's kind of a, a self uh, description, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So relative. Like, I'm not new to the planet, but, you know, I've only been in the industry for 11 years. And it, yeah. So that's what I always say. It's like, you know, it's like mm -hmm. what part of the industry you're in and what you consider, mm -hmm. like, you know, art, really. That's a big thing, like, the, even the question of what really is art. I watch like movies sometimes and people forget oh movies could be an art form you know and people forget that sometimes they're like oh I'm just watching tv and I'm like someone had to build that you know it's like the like they said in um in Devil Wars Prada someone had to design that show to where you wanted to watch it and that you sat down and you committed 48 minutes of your evening once a week yeah. to watch that mm -hmm. yeah well, here's when I thank you for for committing uh, at least 90 minutes, maybe two hours to <laughs> this event tonight. Yes. Um, welcome everybody to the mixer. Um, I don't know how many first timers we have, but for all of you who don't know, this is a monthly event that um, has, you know, is normally in person, but here we are on Zoom. Um, we took this event virtual last year. Um, as part of our, you know, way of meeting the moment. And we'll get into um, more of that, how, how people have met the moment in their creative businesses. Um, tonight, we're gonna dive, dive deep. Um, I'm Alex Rose, I use she, her pronouns. I am with the Office of Film and Music and the Office of Arts and Culture with the City of Seattle. Um, and get to do a lot of really, amazing work with some incredible colleagues um, supporting the, the creative industries, creative economy, and really looking at uh, increasing equity in our sector. Um, I want to acknowledge that we are on indigenous land, the traditional territories of the Coast Salish people. For those of us in Seattle, um, wherever you are, you are on indigenous land. So do what you can to become familiar with um, the history of the place that you're in and be in relationship with uh, the people who have stewarded the land for generations. Um, I want to start by uh, addressing some of the, the recent news about um, leadership within the city. Um, you might be aware that Randy Ingstrom, the director of the Office of Arts and Culture is resigning his position at the end of this week. Um, Randy has been the director of the arts office since 2012 when he was appointed by Mayor Mike McGinn. In his eight years, Randy has overseen a number of important arts-based initiatives that have served to strengthen the arts community and advocated for race and social justice. Randy is proud of his work at the city and knows that both the arts office and the city as a whole are strong and resilient and will continue to serve our communities um, he's leaving the city to spend more time with his family and advocating nationally for arts and racial equity and justice. So you may be wondering what happens now. Well, until, until a new director is appointed by the mayor, Deputy Director Calandra Childers will serve as the acting director of the office. Um, and there is a link that I will throw in the chat um, to Randy's party this Friday. If you want to say, a fond farewell to our friend Randy. Um, this Friday, January 29th is when we'll have our virtual send off for him. Um, and many of you may also be aware that Bobby Lee, the director of the Office of Economic Development is leaving Seattle for a position with the city of Portland. Um, and no decisions have been made yet regarding the future of the uh, interim OED director. We'll be sure to keep you, keep you posted on that. But the mayor's office has been connecting with OED leadership and staff uh, as part of their process in determining the future of, of OED. Uh, you know, the city is dedicated to an equitable recovery throughout the next year. So it's a pretty important um, position to fill. 
But despite these departures, the, the hiring process for the Inclusive Creative Industries Director is moving forward. And we're actively in the process of recruiting and accepting applications for a future Inclusive Creative Industries Director. Um, I think somebody might be able to put the chat to that, um, that position. Yes, will do. Thank you. Um, thanks, Megan. The, the deadline for that position has been extended. So if you were on the fence and you wanna throw your hat in the ring, you got a little bit more time to do that. Um, all right, we have a we have some other positions uh, within the city that are also moving forward. So all this to say, we are um, continuing to do this work, and we will keep you posted and and make sure that you all know what's going on. Um, so just a little bit of housekeeping, and I guess I will. Um, stop sharing my screen in just a second. Um, I want to first thank Ventures for being uh, such a wonderful partner in this program tonight. If you're not familiar with Ventures, you'll hear a little bit about them later and I encourage you to, to check them out. They're a really amazing uh, local resource for small businesses and entrepreneurs. Um, all right. So like I said earlier, we wanna make sure that we are um, being active in the chat tonight. It's a good place to share any questions that you have or, you know, affirm what you're hearing. We are recording as you might be able to tell. And like I said, um, we, we are offering closed captionings for closed captions for those who um, may want that option. And, you know, like I said, it's just a pleasure to, to see your faces and um, Thank you for being here. I would like to bring my friend Jose from Ventures to the to the stage, um, and let me know, Jose, when you are ready for your slides. But I will hand it off to you. Yeah, um, yeah, you can you can go ahead and, and show them. Thank you, Alex, and thank you for bringing us into this mixer. Um, my name is Jose Vasquez. I use he, him, and el in, in Spanish. I'm the director of programs at Ventures Nonprofit. We are a Seattle-based nonprofit. And essentially what we do is we offer uh, resources and support to underrepresented under community folks who either they want to start their business or they already have their business and they want to enhance their, their small business. So that's essentially what we do. Um, okay. So uh, with that, thank you, Alex, for, for bringing us on board. Um, you know, I, 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 I see uh, the screen with many of you who I don't know, uh, and maybe at some point <laughs> I will be able to in person. Um, and maybe you already have a business, um, or maybe you're thinking about opening a business, or maybe you're thinking, you know, I love what I do. I've been doing this for a long time. Trust me, we have people like that that come to ventures and it's like, I love doing art. Can this be a business? So maybe you are in, in that space where you're like, you know, I love what I do. Can this, can this be a business? And regardless of where you are in your process, uh, one thing is for sure that having a business plan will, will be so beneficial to you. Um, whether you have your business or, or you're questioning about uh, what you like, what you like to do, can it be a business? So creating a business plan is very beneficial. And you know, as I state here, creating a business plan will help you figure out if you have a clear business idea, a well-defined potential market, reasonable expenses, and a reasonable change for success. Um, I can I can tell you that I've been with Ventures for over a year and. We had opportunity of, of having some people come into orientation and while we're asking questions about their business or their business plan, that's when you can see them thinking, oh shoot, no I don't. And I don't even know who my customer is or I don't even know how to market what, whatever my service or product is. So having a business plan is good. So I know that we have a limited time. So I'm gonna give you kind of like an overview of what a business, some of the key components of a business plan one thing that I do want to share is that uh, there are different type of business plans. 
So I, the one that I'm gonna share is the one that is based on the curriculum that we use for our eight week uh, business uh, basic course from Ventures. But when you Google it, when you Google business plan, you're gonna have different ones. And uh, at the end of the day, it's gonna be up to you to, uh, to choose which one is gonna be best for you. But they're all gonna have key components like the ones that I'm about to explain that they all talk about your marketing financials and your operations. So going to these components, uh, the, the first one, defining your business, then you have your marketing plan, then you have your sales plan, um, then defining making money from your business, then your break even point analysis, then you have your legal taxes and licensing, and then, and then finally organizing your business. Next slide, oh, thank you. So a little bit about each of them, defining your business, that means you're gonna you're gonna be creating your mission statement. What's what what what's your business? Defining what your business will do. Uh, what problem are you trying to solve, and how you're gonna be presenting this uh, problem solution to your customer? And then also, how different is your product or service from others? So you might not see, especially in this room, you might not see somebody else as a competition, but it is important to know how, how uh, they're providing their services or products to ensure that yours is not the same. And then you might be literally next door, uh, next to somebody else that might be doing something similar to what you wanna do. Your marketing plan, identifying the features of your service, of your product and their benefits. Um, then you're gonna be creating the description of your service or product and also uh, defining the price for, for that. And then, and then also defining where are you gonna be selling the service or product, whether if it's a physical location or currently right now on, on a virtual format. Your sales plan, uh, creating a plan to find your prospective customers and what you, what you know about them. Uh, so that's very important. Uh, identifying who's, who's my customer, maybe it's gender, maybe it's age, maybe it's, maybe it's location, but also finding out um, as much as possible about them. And then creating surveys that you can that you can present to your potential customers. And then the reason why we why we do that, and especially that you add into your business plan, is because it is within that survey that you might be able to find additional needs that you have not thought about, but the customers are telling you or your clients are telling you, I like I would like to have this uh, in addition to what you're offering. Um, and then uh, essentially also developing what your customer service strategy will look like. Uh, in terms of the, the component of making money from your business, you're gonna be creating your profit and your loss projection. So now we're diving into the financial piece of your business plan. So, may, so having the creation of your profit and, and, and your profit and loss projection, um, create your break even point analysis and then create your cash flow projections. So we, do, we don't have a lot of time, uh, but even when you Google these terms, you will see that a lot of, uh, um, there are a lot of formulas associated with this. So meaning like a formula will tell you how many classes do you have to teach or, or how, 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 how much product do you have to sell in order for you to have a break even uh, point um, or even creating your uh, cash flow. Your legal, your taxes and your licensing Defining your legal structure, identifying your licenses, license or licenses that you might need, um, as well as the taxes you will be paying, and then also uh, identifying the insurance that you're going to need uh, for your business. All this to ensure that you, as well as your business, is protected. And the final component for for this specific business plan um, is organizing your business creating the structure on how you're gonna organize and store your business records. Um, so maybe you have envelopes, some people have files, some people are moving away from paper. Um, and then also creating your own time management process. There is a difference between when you work for somebody else versus when you're gonna know that you're gonna work for yourself. And then you go through the process of how I'm gonna manage my time. So almost like a self-management and also time management in order for me to, uh, to ensure that uh, my business is taken care of because essentially you will be the ones who's taking care of your business. And, and then also creating your short and long-term goals um, as a business owner. 
And the very last slide um, is essentially uh, resources. I just put two. Um, because I mean, right now with the with with the web, you can just Google business plan, or even you can even Google uh, creating a business plan for for artists, and you will have tons of different resources. Um, but just as Alex mentioned, you know the, the we are one of the resources in Seattle for those who want to start uh, or enhance new businesses. We have upcoming orientations for um, our basic business business course for the spring. For the winter, we just started last week and this week, but we do have um, BBCs every quarter. And then the other one, which Alex shared with me yesterday, the Small Business Association, they have the uh, a, a link for how to create a business plan. And just as a reminder, these are two uh, resources. Um, there are multiple uh, business plans are, that are out there. At the end, you get to decide, this is what is gonna work for me but three components that all the three main things that all these business plans will, will have, your marketing, your financials, and your operations. And with that, um, thank you for the time. And I know that uh, we do have uh, a group of fantastic Ventures alumni who will talk to you um, about different pieces. And within their conversations, you're gonna hear key pieces about business plans as well, or how they do their business plans. Thanks so much, Jose. Um, you. You'll see the some links um, from those slides shortly in the chat, just to make sure that you have quick access to those. Um, now we is the time. One question. For oh, Jose yeah. In the chat um, from Eric Simpkins. How do you measure accuracy for business plan proposals? I think is Jose frozen. And Eric, feel free to expand on your question if you'd like. Well, like, Pat, like, uh, what degree of accuracy is needed for a good business plan? Because I could just make up any sort of data to to reinforce like my actions. So, like, how do you? determine what level of accuracy is needed for a business plan to like be a good one or actionable in some way. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And and um, for all the Ventures alumni here, feel free to jump in. I think uh, as you're creating your plan and then you're gonna start learning more about doing your, your market research and figuring out what you're trying to sell and what price you're gonna have, that's gonna be helpful. Um, as well as when I'm talking about the financials and like doing your analysis, there's a lot of different formulas that are out there that will help you. Uh, the moment that you identify, is it a class that you're teaching? How much is to, are you gonna charge? Uh, how long is it gonna be? How many people are, you, are, are gonna be in your class? So all these different components will add into your accuracy for yourself. And then when you have all that data and then you start plugging into those these different formulas, the more accurate that your business plan will, uh, will become. Thanks, Jose. Any other questions? Okay, I'd love to um, welcome our guest speakers um, who all happen to have, have um, graduated or completed the um, business course that Jose just mentioned briefly. Um, and if it's all right, I would love to uh, have you all introduce yourselves and, and the businesses that you run. Um, Malia, Malia Peoples, I'd love to start with you if you're ready. Cool, I'm ready. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming to the mixer. Cheers, um, I'm Malia Peoples and I have a couple of creative enterprises. Uh, one is called Other People's Polyester, which is a line of clothing made out of a mix of vintage and new fabrics. And I have a line of porcelain jewelry called Melted. And if you're online, you can check me out, Other People's Polyester or Melted Porcelain. And anybody feel free to hit me up anytime. Uh, I'm also a teaching artist. So uh, how I got in the industry was 
I'm a UW grad. I got my degree in Chinese. And then I went to work in Manhattan for a little bit for a group called China Labor Watch, where I learned about how clothing was made. And then I came back to Seattle with the idea that I would start maybe my own clothing factory or clothing company, something ethical. And I ended up staying to teach at the fashion school. And while I was teaching, I was developing my line of clothing. And from there, I started working on my jewelry. So I have a lot of experience um, selling tangible goods and art. And I have been a part of Ventures for about four years now. I was one of the finalists at their InnoVentures pitch competition a couple of years ago. And that was a really great experience for me. And other than that, I've been working a lot as a teaching artist in the community. Right now I'm teaching at the Yesler Terrace community and also at Path with Art and Coyote Central. And I'm just happy to be here. So um, cheers, soda water cheers. And yeah, great cheers. to be here. Thanks, Malia. Rochelle, Rochelle House. Hi, I'm Rochelle House and um, I use she and her pronouns. And I'm a singer, a songwriter, recording artist. Um, I have a new record, came out during the pandemic. It's called Earth on Fire with my band, uh, with a large group called New House Orchestra. Um, and um, I've been making records for a long time. Um, actually not a long, that long. I raised a bunch of kids first and then came into uh, my career um, late in the game. Um, and then I play small jazz gigs, and then I play all different size jazz gigs, and then I also play my own songs. It's kind of a blending of my songs that my father was kind of a cowboy singer, and so my songs are kind of blend that with jazz, and it's it's a uh, different style of music, I guess. Um, <clears throat> I also teach. I teach uh, singing with the jazz trio at Jazz Night School, or I did before COVID. And um, I teach private lessons and I like to work with people who are all kinds of people, but people who are afraid to sing, people who have been told to just mouth the words in choir and people who uh, are, um, have really intense jobs and they want a place to be able to just relax and, and experience the joy of music. And also uh, I work with people who are preparing to perform or, or to record. Um, I also teach uh, pregnant women with something called birth songs where I teach them in preparation for birth, uh, a toning type of singing that helps with uh, pain and, and stress of, of labor. I also um, have done a neighborhood children's choir at the um, Seattle Children's Play Garden over here. And uh, I taught um, children music in uh, at the DPS Badhani School in, Punjab, India, a couple of years ago. So, um, music. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. All right, Marilyn. Marilyn Montufa. Hi, everyone. So happy Hi. to see your faces. Um, my preferred pronouns are she, her. I am a fine art photographer, originally from Los Angeles. I moved to Seattle in 2012. Uh, my focus in fine art photography is wanting to create greater equity in the arts and diverse stories. So I focus on underrepresented communities. I'm also an educator and an activist. Uh, so right now I'm teaching a youth migrant group that who reside mostly in South Seattle. And I'm also in my focus in education has started a international photo exchange program between students and Mexico City and Vermont that was exhibited in the East Coast and also at the Mayo Museum. Currently I'm working on a project that focuses in Washington state that I'm super excited about. That's about migrant communities and the impact of COVID-19. I'm creating my work. I am also trying to push the boundaries of my own comfort zone and galleries and museums. So I'm super excited to share that Right now, my work is uh, mounted at the Fry Art Museum off Warren. Anyone can see it, it's accessible. Uh, so I'm moving towards that, right? How do we make art more accessible? So it's off Warren and Cherry until April. So if you're in the area, go check it out. But yeah, I would say that in my art, 
my aspiration is to ignite social change with a call to action uh, to make art more accessible and inclusive. Excellent, thank you. Um, my computer's telling me that my bandwidth is low. So if I'm cutting out or anything, give me a wave, okay? Um, Rochelle, I'm gonna turn it to you. Um, I'm curious if you can talk about, you know, beyond ventures, have there been any resources that have helped you, or I guess including ventures, um, that have helped you run your business or, or set goals for your business? Tell us about that. Well, um, I think Ventures actually has been the most helpful for me because uh, I found it in my neighborhood and I walked over there and signed up for the class. And I think the thing that I found was that as an artist, you um, kind of don't think of yourself as a business. And so Ventures was awesome about just letting me be who I was and, and, and just and learn how to do business um, as me. And, um, and, and I will also say that the coaching has been probably actually, you know, just getting into it and thinking about it and trying to figure out how to have it be a business was awesome, but then also working with a coach. And I feel like during COVID, my coach has been practically like, um, like um, business therapy. You know, it's like nobody, not many people really want to just sit down and listen to you talk about your business on a weekly basis, but to have this coach that will work with you and, and, and uh, encourage you to not give up and just keep moving forward is an amazing experience. Yeah, this That's is great. Therapy. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Marilyn? Any resources that you've leaned into? Yeah, I actually wrote down a list because I was trying to jog my mind about what advice I can give or um, like what were the moving parts. And I think in art, there's so many moving parts. There's artist residency, there's the business planning, there's museum exhibitions and creating more art and the business plan. It's a lot of work, right? So for me, what, ha what has helped me is uh, getting mentorship through different sources. Ventures is one of them. Uh, Ventures uh, working with Jones Dunn has helped me get my first artist grant through Artist Trust. He really helped me understand the business aspect of managing a uh, budget, which is so important. So I went to ventures because I had these big ideas, like I want to create this photo series, I want to do X, Y, and Z. And he really helped me write that grant, do the budget part, and you know what, guess what, I got it. So I don't think I would have, maybe I wouldn't have gotten it if James wouldn't have been like, hey, this is the budget aspect of how to make that successful and make sense. And then from there, I've taken professional uh, business classes or professional art courses with uh, the Getty Le Leadership Institute in California, um, the Center for Culture and Innovation. Most recently in New York City, I did um, Creative Capital with two artists that have a little booklet. And I keep all of these booklets. I have a ton. This is the Creative Capital one. Shout out to the Latinx instructors uh, who are Ella Troyano and Carmelita Copicana. So yeah, I want to mention that because this is real, like all of this, right? All this professional development, here's ventures. Because <laughs> there's that part of business that's not so fun, but it's so important in order to make your ideas realistic, make them a reality, right? And then also shout out to Foundry, Foundry Photojournalism in Mexico City, which also brought this other aspect of creating photography from photojournalists. So there's been a lot of uh, workshops that I've taken that have helped me understand how to make my ideas a reality. I love that. So I'm hearing a lot of, you know, looking for, for people who are gonna help spark new ideas or point you to resources to help, you know, keep you motivated and, and finding opportunities for things like conferences or workshops or grants. Yeah, that's all great. Um, well, I know this is, this is a, one of the ways that we, we framed this conversation was like, how have you managed to you know, deal with COVID-19 and all the challenges that, that has presented for your businesses? Maybe it's presented opportunities for your businesses, but basically how, um, I wanna get into how you have pivoted or how you have, um, I guess, stuck with it and stayed nimble through this challenging time. 
So I'd, I'd love to turn it back to Rochelle um, and, and tell us about, you know, how you've, how you've pivoted. Okay. Well, I, um, I'm not gigging. I'm not playing gigs. And uh, so that I've just kind of, what the pivot there is just to keep singing. And I've been uh, working on the piano, playing the piano, cause I'm not a piano player, but just working on that so that I can get better um, for the future. But as far as teaching, I initially, I was so bummed out to have no longer be able to teach face to face in the same room. And, you know, with the uh, distance, trying to do distance learning, having people's, um, you know, you're not in the same time exactly. And that's kind of important music, right? Um, so, so that was a big problem for me at first. But once I kind of made the shift, shift, first of all, realizing it's happening to everybody. It's not like something wrong with the way, what I was doing. It was just the way it worked. But secondly, what I ended up doing was um, just thinking about like when I'm in the recording studio and I'm, and I'm in the vocal booth and I'm singing and then there's a wall and then there's the engineer or producer, whoever's on the, uh, in the other room with the technology. That is something I really love. So I just tried to sh make a shift in my mind, my perspective and just kind of think of teaching online as being kind of like that. So it's, it's more like we're in the studio rather than, than being some kind of terrible situation. And, um, and just, you know, hanging in there, just uh, keep, and also, I mean, even though this is not really a pivot, I think, um, what is it, PUI or the uh, unemployment for artists and, in, and entrepreneurs is something that um, I have found to be helpful as well, as far as just like being able to keep the day-to-day -day thing happening and building an online teaching business. Yeah, so finding those available resources and kind of shifting your mindset to- And just trying to have it be fun rather than terrible. <laughs> That's a good attitude. Yes, Thanks. it's important. Um, Marilyn, what about you? How have you shifted your, your business? Yeah, I think that as creative people, it's a gift that we're always problem solving, right? We have these big ideas of, I want to make this project, so we have to figure out how to do it. And in adjusting uh, my business, I'm also a teaching artist, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, I was working on a project between uh, Los Angeles and Seattle, Los Angeles being my hometown and Seattle, my new hometown, newish, I guess. But anyhow, um, we all just right away shifted into working remotely on Zoom and shifted again the exhibition we were working on. And in my personal projects, um, everything has changed, right? Some of the residencies have been postponed a year. One of my exhibitions was in 2020 summer and now it maybe will be fall 2021. So it's just kind of rolling with it. But I think it's also been a gift because it's allowed me to collaborate with individuals that maybe I couldn't see or I had to fly somewhere to be with them. And now I, I, we can communicate like we all are right now, right? Uh, but in my personal project uh, that I mentioned with migrant workers, it's allowed me to work with students in Mount Vernon, other educators and partnering up with Underground Writing and uh, the Mount Vernon Migrant Leaders Club so it, it's been in some ways really, really wonderful. And then shout out, I'm gonna be teaching a class at Photo Center Northwest uh, with social justice and photography and it's all remote. So that's going to happen in the spring. So sign up, spread the word. <laughs> yeah, feel free to drop a link to that in the chat. So I hear, you know, you're not restricted by, you're, you're embracing how you're not restricted by uh, geography and you're able to collaborate um, with people in other places. Do you want to say anything more about collaborating virtually? I know that was a question on some folks' mind when they were. Yeah, I think more and more my projects are moving towards social practice. Um, and that has been really interesting and in partnering up with people in Mexico City, with people in, in Vermont. So even before we all went remote, 
we were already in different locations making a project in Mexico City. So I think that kind of gave me insight to where we're all at right now in terms of working together on a Google Drive folder, dropping images from students, uh, doing meetings remotely. And so I think it's just a matter of being patient and pivoting to be like looking at the positive, what we do have rather than what we don't have. So an example is I'm working with my photo collective and there's some frustration because our photo exhibition keeps being pushed out, right? But then that also gives us time to look for more grants. We just got a grant from FCA uh, that's helping us with our exhibition. So I think it's just about being patient and in collaborations and being very, very, very organized and being on the same page. Love it. Thank you. Uh, Malia, tell us about how you have um, shifted during this pandemic. So I remember when it first started, I was in Hawaii with my family and all of a sudden all of the shows, like as a maker, I have a full calendar of shows that I've paid for and planned out at least a half a year, if not to a year in advance. And so with that in mind, and especially my business plan and all that, I kind of have a, a projection of what I need. So I'm in there in Hawaii, there for auntie's 91st birthday, and the world is like shutting down before my very eyes. And I'm getting all these phone calls from like the Seattle Art Museum and my contact at the Seattle Housing Authority saying like all this crazy stuff's happening. And, and I went from like being what I feel like is gainfully employed. And for an artist, we fight for that. Um, to somebody that has absolutely nothing. And at the time there wasn't that PUA, uh, that pandemic unemployment, whatever that acronym is. I'm, I'm sick of acronyms, but you know, there was, that, that wasn't a thing there. So I was really struggling like really hard mentally, like crying all the time, like why, you know, in the rain, like why is this happening to me? And I was so negative about it for such a long time. So it's really good to hear um, you know, Rochelle and Marilyn talking about like focus on the positive. And I think that really is a great way to pivot is to try to look at everything as an opportunity. So, so what I've learned through the COVID about pivoting is just um, basically a shift in priorities and a shift in, in expectations. So back in the old world, you know, I had a schedule and all these different ideas and now things have changed instead of doing online, I'm sorry, instead of doing in-person selling, I've now shifted all of my efforts to doing things online. So thankfully they have things like Zoom, uh, you know, where I can continue to teach classes and, and Facebook and Instagram and, you know, even email lists and stuff like that. So I've been trying to embrace that. And it is a different type of grind. Like as an artist, a lot of times you wanna sing, you wanna make, you just wanna be in your flow state. You don't wanna have to worry about technology a lot. Uh, I'm trying to just you know, throw myself out there, say yes to as many opportunities as I can, um, you know, relatively so. Again, you have to weigh the costs and the benefits, but sometimes things you know, might not be a monetary payout, uh, but you're planting some seeds in the garden that will eventually come to fruition in some way. Um, one success story is there was a gal in Philadelphia that opened up a new ceramic store called Ceramic Concept. And because I was posting on Instagram, this person found me and placed a wholesale order with me. And so that was a really huge thing for me to have gallery representation on the East Coast. And, you know, a few of these other opportunities have popped up and, you know, it's just about, it's not always about money, although we all need money, uh, but it's also about what other opportunities arise. And again, making those connections, collaborations, seeing people. I sold one of my first pieces to somebody in the UK. That was big for me. And it's just trying to celebrate the big successes and stay positive. But also like, if you feel the feelings, let it go because because damn, I've, I've cried it out on so many days. And, you know, a lot of my other friends that are in these industries, we all feel the same way. And, you know, just a quick mention on some of the resources, you know, try to find community with other makers. So for me, um, you know, I've been 
networking a lot with other other makers in my industry and it's nice to have that you know camaraderie yeah it sounds like you're you're networking you're you're putting yourself out there on social media and um, finding new opportunities that way too i think that's a i guess a benefit of this time right we have a little more time to to play with social media watch some tutorials or or spy on other people we admire to, to get ideas. Um, can you tell us a little bit about setting your rates and how you kind of calculate, um, you know, the, your, your financial structure? Um, we had some questions about that from our guests. So for me, because I pretty much, well, I have tangible items like, you know, my necklace here. I have done a lot of research into what other people are making. So before I even started making jewelry, which is just a couple of years ago, uh, you know, I was making clothing and I decided I want to start making jewelry. So I was following some people, checking out their shops, um, you know, so noticing what the market will bear. The other thing is how much do the materials cost? So in fashion and making clothing, that's something we think about all the time. Because a lot of artists, you know, how much does paint cost or how much time does it take for me to travel from place to place? You know, with with um, fashion, we're buying fabric and we're buying lots of it. And it's just a huge thing. And it's kind of hard and it's kind of a pain. And so I'm always thinking about how much how much are materials? Also, how much intellectual time did I put into this? So how long did it take for me to draw this, design it, do the fittings, all that? And of course, things like overhead. I've got some shared studio space uh, down in Belltown at a place called Sassafras, which has been really helpful for me because it's a fashion design only space and there's about eight of us in-house designers. And so, you know, my studio rent, uh, even down to like the thread, you know, you really gotta, gotta keep it all tight because whatever you spend to make the thing, you gotta think about, you know, how much is, how much are you gonna ask somebody, you know? And the same is, is for my teaching as well. And I'm, I think there are other teaching artists here that might want to speak uh, to that too. Yeah, how about you, Rochelle? How, how do you, um, you know, you don't have the, the physical, some, some things are physical that you sell, um, your, your records, but yeah, yeah you, how about your it, time? Yeah, let's, let's not talk about records because they'd be, they'd be so expensive, it would be ridiculous, but that, um, the uh, as far as uh, private lessons and 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 group lessons and that sort of thing, I basically look to see what other people are charging, and then and and then charge a, a similar rate. I thought I kind of thought I would have to lower my rate when we became it went online because I felt like it wasn't as as um, high a quality of a service. But um, my coach suggested that I just keep it the same rate and it's been fine. It's, it's uh, yeah, so I just look at what other people charge and kind of copy them. That's how I've done it. Great. So it sounds like both of you have done a little market research and, and um, factored in, you know, the time that you're putting in and, and all of the overhead and everything like that. And just to add to like, have the courage to ask for that too. So mm -hmm. a lot of times, at least my experience as a fashion designer is people are always wanting something for free because in their mind, they're looking at me, but, but they're thinking, oh, Walmart and a t-shirt. Right. No, that's not what you're getting, but you have to have the courage because as an artist, every time you're racing to the bottom, somebody else is having to race with you to that bottom. And it's just not, it's not right. And it's not fair. And we have to, because nobody ever goes to like the dentist and like, hey, I don't know about this. You know, I mean, that's a thing. So, so be that, we have to be in this together. I also want to say that um, as, a, uh, as a band leader, it's a little bit, the way I do that is thinking about how much the value of the players that I'm playing with, because I play with really good musicians. And so even though I might, lower the rate for myself if it was just me. Since I'm playing with people that I really want to have them be able to be making a living, then I ask for uh, an, an amount that is uh, more appropriate, I think. Yeah, good point. You gotta, gotta make sure you're Get compensating the people, yeah, that you're, <laughs> that are helping uh, create the work. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I would make a quick plug in here. Um, I, I had a clothing line for five years and in general, the standard was if you total up all of the costs of production and administration and multiply it by two, that's going to be your cost per unit. Um, so that was, it, you know, if you just got a spreadsheet and you're plugging in um, start to finish, get to a total times two or even 2.5, that's generally a good place to start when it comes to a physical product. Of course, there are some that, that would not fit in that category. I see yeah, Eric so, uh, pushing for three, three times. Yeah, I wanna to add to what Malia said about the importance of advocating for yourself as an artist as well, because there's that mentality of, oh, you're just gonna do this like, no, <laughs> you know, we also studied, we worked really hard, we did a ton of workshops and a lot of professional development. So I also want to say how important it is to advocate for yourself because in doing that, you're also advocating for other artists. So when I say X, Y, Z is what I'm worth, then you're setting that platform not just for yourself, but for your community. And um, Alex, if I may, um, you know, as I hear all of them, and, and one of the one of the pieces that we that we're not artists, but we work at nonprofits, so we work at corporations, and sometimes we have opportunities to have this place or whatnot, and and very often they're like, hey, can you donate your time, or hey, can you come and perform for fifteen minutes for free, and then the opportunity that we have to advocate on their behalf in terms of no, they like the the music that the, the, they didn't just came out of the nowhere, or like the the artistry or the experience didn't came out of the nowhere. Everything has a value, and all of them have a value. So we also have an opportunity to advocate and say, no, there's nothing is free. Nothing came to them for free. So what op the opportunity for us to be like, no, do you have a budget? Love it. Yes. Never accept. And I, I guess to, to Malia's point earlier, sometimes there are those opportunities that um, that you make that you know cost benefit analysis, and sometimes it makes sense to comp things or 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 perform for free or whatever. But um, whenever you have the opportunity to ask for your worth, do that. Um, we are going to break out in a little bit into um, breakout rooms so that you all can can dive deeper with our speakers. Um, but I wanted to just kind of go around for one last uh, one last question or set of questions. Um, and this actually came through the registration process. So thank you to to the person who submitted this one. What do you wish you knew when you started your business? And what are the most crucial steps you would recommend to someone, uh, you would recommend that somebody must do when starting a business? Uh, and Marilyn, I'm gonna start with you. Self-care. <laughs> Self-care is everything. And also, as Malia said, uh, community is so important. For me, those are the two things that it's such a grind to, uh, do art. It's not just fun and taking photos. It's a lot of work. So I think for me, um, I talked about the creative capital work, uh, workshop I did in New York. And right away, our two mentors were like, how many of you take vacations? Never. Nunca. It was in Spanish. So I think for me, it's like, I wish in the beginning I would have implemented more self-care and I've been really lucky to continue conversations with the community, but as Malia said, that's really helped me during these rough patches during uh, during COVID-19 of feeling isolated is having these real talk with other artists through the Centrum cohort that I was leading and being vulnerable with each other, even, and also about like how difficult it is to talk about rejection. Um, because even though this year I'm a finalist, for the Betty Bowen Award and I was a finalist for the Medi Award, my rejection pile is also like this. So sometimes I don't think we make enough space to be transparent and talk about what it is to be a creative individual in your field. Thank you, yeah. Surrounding yourself with the people who are gonna 
be your squad or your team and and making sure that you're taking care of number one throughout that. Yeah, I love it. Um, Rochelle. I think advice. that I think that um, just being an artist and being an artistic person and creative person, it was very it was hard to become focused on business. And also in a in the in the jazz scene in particular, I'm not sure so much about other scenes, but the idea of of trying to promote yourself, you sh you're supposed to be chosen, kind of. And so the idea of promoting your music or promoting yourself or trying to like be a good business person sometimes is looked down upon. And so I just think that people who are artists and are not sure that if they're a business, like uh, the, that old saying, um, I'm not a businessman, I'm a business man. The, the idea of being, just take what you do. If you just have always been an artist, just take that and learn how to have that be business, how to have business about that. And don't worry if people who decide that you shouldn't promote your, try to make money doing your art are probably people that don't need money, you know? So I think that some of us need to make a living. And so go ahead and, and, and ask for money for what you do and, uh, and have it be a part of the thing that you enjoy in your process. Great, thank you. And Malia, words of wisdom. What do I wish I knew when I started my business? Probably the importance of networking. So for me, everybody, my whole life has been like, you're weird. So everyone just thinks I'm weird. Okay, maybe I am, I don't care. But um, for me, networking has always been like this kind of a, like a weird, uncomfortable, awkward thing. Even though I think I'm nice, I think I'm friendly. I look okay, I wear makeup. Um, but I never felt comfortable networking ever. Uh, this Zoom meeting is so cool. I'm super comfortable with this, thanks. Um, but it is important because one, you can learn a lot. You can have mentors, um, you can have people that maybe want you to mentor them. And, you know, everybody just can come up together if we have each other. And, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities that can, can come about through networking. Uh, I think because my background is in fashion, it was always had like this air of fakeness, which I wasn't comfortable with. I should have spent more time trying to find my people wherever they are and not necessarily fashion people, but maybe I should have been hanging out with Marilyn and Rochelle this whole time. Like we're, you know, so important networking, you know, really important. And then as far as crucial steps, uh, when you start a business, uh, diversify. So for me, I had an idea. I wanted to have a fashion line. I ended up teaching. Um, you know, I have a number of friends that are in the fashion industry that are waiting tables while they're waiting for their dream and fashion to happen. But being able to, I guess, diversify in your own uh, field makes it feel like less of a grind. So for me, thank goodness, teaching has saved me so many times. You know, it's paid my bills so many times and I can still make my clothing and sell it and be a fashion designer. But if I didn't have that, what else would I be doing? I don't know. I might be scooping ice cream. Uh, you know, it's hard to say, but I think that's a really important thing is, you know, try to diversify. Don't just be a performer, but also a teacher and maybe have some merch too. Um, and then also, you know, realize that you're going to spend a lot of time not making your stuff and that can drive you insane. Mm -hmm. Oh, so great. Thank you all so much. Oh, this has been such a pleasure hearing about kind of the, the getting behind the scenes with y'all and, and hearing your stories, hearing your accomplishments and your challenges um, and just, you know, being in solidarity here with each other. Um, so join me, everybody, if you uh, are able to take yourself off mute and give our speakers a round of applause. Woo! Thank you. One of these silent applauses. Um, wonderful. Um, well, now we're going to spend a little bit of time. Let's go for about 20 minutes um, in breakout rooms where you'll have the chance to just kind of have a Q&A or go deeper on uh, anything that you heard from our speakers. Um, 
you will have uh, the opportunity if you're if you have the most current version of Zoom, you should be able to um, move yourself among the rooms or between the rooms. So you know, don't feel like you have to stay in one room if you're you know really curious to hear from everybody. That's um, that's totally fair and allowed for you to just kind of, you know, migrate between the rooms. And um, we'll also have a city of Seattle staff person in each room. So if anything, if you got any burning questions about the, um, what's going on at the city, we'll have somebody in each room to, uh, to be there for you. So if, and I guess I should say, if you have not um, updated your Zoom, you'll be okay. Um, Jacqueline is here to help you. So you can just remain in the, the main room and, and you'll get to the right place. Just uh, let Jacqueline know where you wanna go. We'll give you a five minute warning when we're, when we're about to, to bring you back and then you should get a, a one minute warning as well. So here we go, I'm opening the rooms now. And speaking of finding your people, how about it? Welcome back, welcome back. Hi. Folks are trickling in. Um, well, that was so lovely. I don't know about y'all, but that was just so great to, to get to know uh, some of you who I haven't had the pleasure of meeting before. Um, we will have more networking time shortly. Just wanted to come back together and say thank you once again um, to our speakers, Marilyn, Rochelle, and Malia, and Jose as well. Thank you, Ventures, for being uh, such a great partner in this program. Um, Jose, do you want to talk about any upcoming Ventures opportunities that folks can look into? Sure. So uh, I share on the on the chat. Um, so we have our uh, basic business course every quarter. We have it both in Spanish and English. Um, and uh, right now it's virtual. Uh, so prior to prior to COVID, you had to drive all the way to the 2100 building in central by central district. Right now it's all virtual. So at the comfort of your own home. Um, you can take the class, it's, a, it's eight weeks, it's from six to 9 p.m. It depends on the day, it could be a Tuesday or a Wednesday, but it's once a week, three hours. And uh, by the testimonies of, of three of our amazing alumni here today, um, you know, you, you, you'll be able to get a lot, um, a lot of, of um, uh, support and resources for your business. Um, so I'll put the, the, the link on the chat for the upcoming orientations. Um, but yeah, the, the, uh, the BBCs will start in late March for the spring quarter. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we, I, I don't know that I clearly stated this. I know it was in the, in the language about the, the mixer but this is the first in a series of three mixers for this first quarter of the year where we're talking about the business of creativity. Um, so if you want to come back next month, we'll be talking about finances and financial planning, getting ready for tax season um, and all of the wonderful things that involve numbers and money. And that will be February 24th. And then in March, we'll be talking about marketing. So the mixer is always the last Wednesday of the month. So March 31st, mark your calendars for that. Um, let's see, any, any announcements anyone else wants to share or any questions on your minds? Uh, one thing I'd share if I could, um, for people that are in film, music, anybody that's produced work uh, in the past year that, that um, could qualify as an advertisement or um, whether it's self-promotion or you know, if you did a website, anything that you, any work you're proud of, um, I um, 
Uh, I'm on the board for the American Advertising Federation chapter here in Seattle, AAF Seattle. Um, the, their, the, our awards, uh, we have our, our awards entries are open right now. The, 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 um, we want to make sure that we include um, people who are affected by um, COVID in terms of financial hardship and um, BIPOC creators. So um, if anybody wants to enter the awards and they have any you know, hardship in covering the entry fees, um, you can contact me and we can see what we can do about defraying those costs. Um, I'll put information in the chat, but it's um, the advertising awards are a really great way to get um, visibility for your work, credibility for your work, um, to be known you know, to the agencies in town if you wanna start doing music for, for commercials, things like that, uh, if you want to be known as a graphic designer, and it's it's really good kind of, uh, you know, uh, credibility tool. Um, I'll put the, a link in, in my own um, email in the, in the chat, but um, have a look at that. Yeah, the, the late deadline is Friday night, but uh, I can even extend that for anybody that contacts me directly. So just uh, if you're interested in that kind of thing, um, I'd love to help make that happen. I wouldn't oh, be. Wow, thank you. Is that for licensing for um, placements within the advertisement? Um, that is, yeah. If you, I mean, if, can you restate that? I want to make sure. I, I want to be sure I understand, understand you. Is this is this regarding like getting placements in a commercial? Well, if yeah, well, if you have done music that's been used in a commercial. You could enter. Uh, oh, under I the, see. Okay. The music, uh, okay. music in a commercial category. Okay. Um, it's an awards. Uh, it there's there's a lot of different categories. So there's things around. Um, there's a there's even a. Um, uh, we have a, a mosaic award where there's if you've done specific work highlighting, um, uh, uh, doing creative that that highlights. Um, um, What's the proper, what's the best way to, to put that? It's a brand new category that they did, but it, it the at a national level, the Mosaic Awards are always really fantastic. They highlight stories uh, or uh, uh, around underrepresented ideas and, and people and, and experiences. Um, and it's some of the most creative work ever and it's uh, usually, I mean, of all the awards. Um, so there's 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 thematic ways that that you can enter and then there's, you know, copywriting and, and straight up, uh, categories that are pretty familiar if you've watched the Oscars and things like that that it kind of seems to follow for what would be in advertising but um, um, yeah I mean like sound design and, and editing for for commercials and small short films there's a lot of social media categories now so if you're a creator and you publish your own stuff that can count as self-promotion and I mean it, if anybody's like freaking huge on TikTok there's a way to, <laughs> to get awards for that so it's it's kind of mm -hmm. cool yeah i have um, an announcement awesome. to make uh for the company i work for gigs for you normally pre-covid we would have had musicians performing seven times a week within the airport but to uh, mm, compensate yeah. for that we're going to have like an mtv style uh reel of artists so if any musicians would like to submit um a good quality live music videos they could send that uh to me directly and we would um, review it for submission that's awesome. Great. Aline, can you put your email sure. in the chat? Did you already do that? I will Maybe do I that. missed it. Cool. Well, we have a little time left. Uh, you know, we're not done till seven here. So um, what I'd like to do is just break us up into a couple of, of random breakout rooms. Um, I guess. Can I mention something? Oh me? yeah, please. Um, I just want to say really quickly that one of the points I was hoping that we would touch upon that maybe, I don't know, I don't remember if we did so clearly, but I think for all creative people, we have our ups and downs, ups and downs. And I feel like I said earlier, sometimes we're not as transparent in creating that dialogue when times get difficult. So I just want to say for our creative community that if you're ever or when you're feeling even if it's more recently feeling like i don't even know if i can continue doing this it just please know that you're not alone because i don't know one creative individual including myself who hasn't felt like this is really hard to do so I just wanted to say that before we end and, or before we break up the room yes i, I have one thing 
I wanted to say too, Alex, if I might. Uh, okay, so we were talking about Kate Olson a minute ago, and I just wanted to say that she, I was saying that she has a gig on, on Friday night, so, uh, but I just looked it up and it's uh, live concerts stream, so there's two S's in there, dot com, and okay. this Friday night at 8 p.m. she'll be doing a show, or her playing saxophone and then her synthesizers and different things like that, so I just wanted to give a shout out for, to Kate Olson for Friday night. Cool, I like Kate. Yes, I will um, put that link in the chat as well for live concert stream. Um, I guess another plug, just because why not? There's also a um, Northwest Arts Streaming Hub, mm -hmm. which if you don't know about that would um, be another great place to submit videos and um, whether it's live stream events that are coming up or pre-recorded videos that you've got. Um, I'll put the, the link to that in the chat as well. Um, just, you know, another place to get more eyeballs and, and have folks discover Northwest artists. Right. Um, do any, I guess, out of curiosity, do any of you work with young folks or know, um, know young folks who might be looking for internships, might be looking for opportunities to do some oh, yeah. courses online. Yes. When I, I think Rain City Rock Camp, but that, maybe that's too young. Well, I mean, there's a lot of young people, especially like, like because I do Twitch a lot, the average age of someone is 21 on Twitch. So, okay. so I don't know like how young you're really looking for. Okay, well, I'm just gonna put, the, put this out there. Come and find Ashraf or me in the breakout rooms and we will talk about young creatives All right. and, and opportunities out there. Okay. Okay. So I am going to do a random assortment here, breakout rooms. But again, you should be able to move yourselves if you'd like. Um, we've got about 20 minutes and uh, we'll come back one last time to say goodbye, but here we go. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go into our rooms now right. <laughs> to meet some more to meet some more of you. <laughs> yeah, so hard to stop the magic. Trying to keep us on time, everybody. Nothing personal. I left the room, Matt, just when you were gonna tell us all about it. My apologies. I was trying to uh, do something else, but I left. <laughs> no worries. It's just like the mysteries of Zoom, right? I've done that so many times. <laughs> But thanks for asking. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, uh, well, thank you everyone for sticking around. It's been so great to connect with you all. Uh, I don't know about you, but my, my tank feels a lot fuller. Uh, now we're looking at seven o'clock. Um, so yes, once again, Rochelle, Malia, Marilyn, Jose, thank you so much uh, for bringing your, your expertise and your honesty and your stories um, and your resources. Thank uh, you. I see folks put, putting emails in the chat. So if you didn't get a chance to share your contact information, please do that. Um, I talked a little bit about some opportunities. Um, one thing that I didn't mention is the City Artist Grant this year coming out of the Art, Art Office of Arts and Culture is um, open to Seattle-based film and media makers, um, screenwriters, literary and visual artists. So I'm gonna put a link to that just in case that is um, useful to any of you all. Um, and here's my email for those of you who may not have it. Boom. Um, hope to see you next month and the month after that and the month after that. We'll be here on Zoom until they tell us we can get back together in person, but um, it felt like we were in the same space. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate all you. Um, thanks for, for everything you brought tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Be in thanks. Touch. Much love. Bye. 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 Thank you there, everybody. Bye. Bye.